Today, I want to talk about how AMC will hit new all-time highs this year. Both the box office and AMC revenues for 2024 are set to overtake 2019, destroying the short thesis and rocketing AMC to new highs. I also want to talk about how UBS has discovered a material error in Credit Suisse. So stay tuned and let's make some money. Today is also the final day of the Easter sale at the Millionaire Mindset Trading Group. Today, both Mr. Toad and Freak Deline paid off their lifetime membership in just one trade. So be sure to use code EASTER at checkout for $100 off the price of the lifetime membership or 25% off your first month of the monthly membership using the link in the description below. But now I'll dive straight in with the key information. So Adam Aaron tweeted saying, Happy Easter everyone. My good news on this Easter Sunday is that in March, the domestic industry box office finally turned upwards, the best March in five years. He said this is so encouraging in looking at the movie slate deeper into 2024. He said many superb movies are coming. He also attached a screenshot of Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, but not only that, he also went on to make another ape-related tweet. Now, so let's dive into the figures and explain how AMC will hit new all-time highs this year. Tarzan tweeted saying in 2023, revenue increased by 23% year over year to $4.8 billion. We can see from this screenshot from 2022 to 2023, revenue increased from 3.9 billion to 4.8 billion at AMC directly, a year over year change of 23%. And he added saying we only need a 12% increase in revenue year over year to beat the all time high of 2018, 2019. Again, we can see AMC's highest ever revenue generated was $5.47 billion, just another 12% increase. Again, over the last few years, AMC has increased revenues by 103%, 54%, and 23%. Another 12% is easily attainable, especially with many more superb movies coming in 2024. And especially when even factoring in those giant writer strikes last year, the box office only came in around $100 million below 2023 for quarter one setting us up for quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four to exceed 2023, aka growing revenue another year in a row. Tarzan is saying we're just 12% away from AMC theaters becoming a successful company and hitting new all-time highs, at least in terms of revenues, profits, EBITDA, and cash flow. And obviously when AMC hits new all-time highs in terms of revenue, it destroys that short thesis. This is exactly what Amazon did when their stock price fell from over $100 per share down to $4 per share. They increased revenues, increased profits, increased a bit da and everything else and hit new all-time operating highs. That obviously led to the manipulation and the shorts being overcome by business fundamentals and obviously more and more institutions and retail investors buying the stock, pushing the price higher. This has happened time and time again to other companies as well, like Booking.com, like Nvidia, and many other tech companies. Now, I don't know if this is an April Fool's tweet or an excerpt from a mainstream media article, but Randall Cornett tweeted about a company that's just de-risked tons of bankruptcy issues and restructured debt, saying this is actually a nice sympathy play and it's connected to AMC and Cinemark, and that company is National Cinemedia. He said, if you're betting on movies bouncing back in a big way, I see this as a high value play. This is obviously similar to those mainstream media outlets trying to convince you to sell AMC and buy other cinema companies like National Cinemedia. This is suggesting the box office will bounce back in a big way, pushing all of these theatre cinematic companies up like Cinemark, like National Cinemedia and of course like AMC. Now, obviously, I can't tell you which company to buy, which company to sell, which shares to sell and which shares to buy. But if the mainstream media is telling us to buy National Cinemedia because cinema will recover, maybe AMC will do the exact same thing, obviously destroying that short thesis. You have to remember it's not the decline in cinema that led to the decline in AMC share price. It's not Adam Aaron that led to the decline in AMC share price. It's those shorts and those market makers controlling the price as to where they want it to be. Obviously, these market makers 
don't want to be squeezed into bankruptcy and therefore they control the price downwards with their infinite liquidity abilities. But obviously with the recovery, the bounce back and the improvement in the cinema industry, all of those cinematic companies will improve, will increase and their share prices will follow too. I also wanted to go through today's 100% gainer on CXAI where many people in the group paid off their lifetime membership with just this one trade. CXAI released some news of a partnership with Google and we waited for that three minute news breakout, sending the alert in the pre-market at $3.57. CXAI pushed up throughout the remainder of the pre-market and through the rest of the day as well, giving us multiple entry points on pullbacks if you missed the initial alert. Mr. Toad locked in $750 of profit, paying off his lifetime membership with just one trade. Wanda locked in a 76% gain or nearly $300. Freak Deline bought and sold multiple times throughout the day again, paying off his lifetime membership. And Jet Doc took an excellent trade as well, locking in a good 40%. So guys, it's the last day of the Easter sale, so be sure to use code EASTER at checkout using the link in the description below for $100 off the price of the lifetime membership. Now Heisenberg has also tweeted about the latest warning from JP Morgan Chase, who are expecting a flash crash one day out of the blue. It says JP Morgan Chase's top global equity strategist told clients this week to brace for the possibility of a flash crash, which could come one day out of the blue. He cited the high degree of crowding in these big names, which could lead to a major momentum unwind from fund managers if there's a domino effect of repositioning, an unwinding which would translate to noticeable declines in stock indexes. AK suggesting when these big seven names start pulling down, it will cause a domino effect, crashing the S&P 500. Of course, we know that when one domino falls, all of the dominoes fall. And as I mentioned at the start of the video, Kristen has also tweeted about UBS warning of possible errors in Credit Suisse's reported financials. This article says UBS is still reviewing the risk of misstatement in Credit Suisse's books. The article says the bank on Thursday in its annual report said there's a risk that a material error may not be detected by UBS and could result in a material misstatement to Credit Suisse's reported financial results, which are now merged with UBS's. In February, UBS was examining material weaknesses in Credit Suisse's internal controls for 2021 and 2022. Both the SEC and Credit Suisse's previous auditors had previously raised flags on these internal control issues, suggesting that Credit Suisse was mispricing some assets or some liabilities in a big, big way. They weren't showing those losses in their financial statements and that massive material error could be or likely is still hiding. AK suggesting that UBS still has that massive toxic derivative liability on their books. They're trying to figure out either how to recognize it correctly, how to realize that loss in the safest way, or how to shift that loss off their books. So guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always guys, be sure to ding that notification bell, because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.